I've shot apple seed a couple times now, and one of the things they really hammer home, and I have to agree with them on, is the importance of a shooting sling. Um, however, both times I've shot apple seed, I've wanted to use a CZ-452. It's a favorite rifle of mine. Uh, it has been for many years. Um, despite being a bolt action, it's worked very well. I've managed to shoot uh, rifleman scores in both, uh, on both instances. Uh, one of the problems I've run into, though, uh, is the sling swivels. Now, the factory sling, sling swivels on this CZ-452 trainer, and this is the first rifle I brought to Appleseed, are about an inch wide. Now, while I'm told there are shooting slings that are an inch wide, uh, they're few and far between. I haven't found many um, that would work with these factory sling swivel studs. And the, the factory studs are actually integral with the stud, the swivels are integral with the studs themselves. Now, I'm told there are ways to modify this. For example, uh, there's a screw that holds the swivel onto the stud that can be removed and then reamed out with a drill, the hole reamed out with a drill, uh, so that a quick detached sling swivel stud of an inch and a quarter width uh, can be put in its place. Um, that seems fine if you're gonna if you're willing to do that. I didn't want to modify this uh, any more than I had to. The only modifications I've done to this are obviously the iron sight on the rear is a Williams iron sight, um, and then a trigger job, uh, just uh, shimming the trigger to make it a little bit uh, have a little less take up before the break. Um, so I needed to find a sling that would work with these studs. One of the most recommended sw uh, slings for the CZ452 uh, happens to be. Chinese SKS sling. Um, you'll recognize it. Actually, let me find a unmodified one here. Um, the surplus version is cotton canvas with leather tabs on each end. The leather tabs are coaxial with the sling itself. There are no buckles. That's one of the things that helps distinguish it from a mostly Nagant sling. Um, it doesn't have the dog collars. It just has a leather tab with a usually aluminum rivet and a steel D-ring. Um, it has what Appleseed likes to call an H buckle, um, sort of a tri-lock down here. Um, then on the other end is a loop with another steel D-ring, a leather tab with another aluminum ribbon. Um, these are typically recommended for the CZ-452 and in their usual form, the factory form, they can be used as a hasty sling in any position um, rather well. Um, but I wanted to do something else. I wanted to actually be able to use it as a loop sling. And it has most of the architecture of the uh, recommended sling, the GI sling or the Grand Sling, which is cotton canvas has the H buckle and a loop down at the bottom, and then a quick detach, a quickly detachable steel hook down at the other end. Main difference is that the SKS sling doesn't have any sort of adjustability on the uh, the single strand end. But that's uh, that was something that I didn't feel was totally necessary if it was just going to be me who was using it and not being issued to an entire army of people. Uh, one of the other things that makes uh, this modification rather than trying to use the grand sling important is. So if I wanted to use, for example, my surplus Berno Model 1. Now this has even narrower sling swivels up here. These are about three quarters of an inch wide. Now I don't know how many one inch uh, shooting slings there are. I couldn't find many, but I'm pretty sure there are going to be very few that are, I shouldn't say three quarters of an inch, probably about seven eighths of an inch. So even smaller than a one inch uh, shooting sling. It would make it very difficult to use um, any other sling for this. However, the three quarter inch leather tab fits in here perfectly. At least it would if I'm not trying to do this in a stupid way. Um, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, it also, even if you're not using a rim fire, the rifle for which it was designed, the uh, this is a Norinco Surplus SKS, uh, up here doesn't have any sling swivel at all. It just has a loop. Um, I think they're called carriage loops these days is what the in vogue term is. Uh, it was designed specifically for this leather cap. I'm not going to try to say to you that this this sling or this sling modification is the best thing for apple seed. Clearly, it's not. Apple seed is designed around uh, the GI sling. Um, it's what it's designed for. Is what it's designed uh, centering around. In fact, when I built the uh, built rifles for both, I say build. When I put together rifles for my sister and brother-in-law, built them on a Marlin 795. Once again, I use the word build. Um, I use the GI sling with some inch and a quarter swivels on the standard swivel studs. This is for rifles that don't have these swivel studs and don't have an easy way of adding them. With the CZ-452 or even the Burno, um, it's not impossible to unscrew, unscrew the entire swivel assembly, take it out of the rifle, put a quick detached stud on there, and then use your inch and a quarter swivels. In fact, if you wanted to, you wanted to do things cheap and dirty, you could probably just take an inch and a quarter swivel hook it into the factory swivel
and just use it like that. Um, and while form should follow function, I don't think form should be forsaken entirely. This looks ugly, and, and it feels bad, and quite honestly, if you've got a collectible rifle, you probably don't want to take that to Appleseed anyway, because you do a lot of shooting. Um, but at the same time, it's not something that seems to fit on the rifle, in case you're using it for anything else, because this uh, this is widely applicable, not just to Appleseed. Um, the type of shooting they teach at Appleseed is broadly applicable to almost any situation. But right now, we're going to I'm right now I'm going to show you how to set up the sling. Um, first of all, I guess I'll go over a couple different types of slings, um, then how to set it up, and then do the modification that will allow you to use it as a loop sling um, in any of the positions they teach you. All right, let's talk about the different slings. Uh, the first one is the top, uh, the first one at the top here is pretty much your most standard uh, surplus sling. I say surplus, uh, it's made out of cotton canvas. Um, it's got the genuine leather, fairly thick leather tabs up here with the aluminum rivet. Um, these are very nice if you can get them. However, I have had some where the leather is so dried and cracked uh, that it had to be replaced. Um, this one, you can see it's sort of cracked up here. Um, but yeah, you sort of run the risk when you order one of these uh, on what its condition is. I've not seen anything bad with the buckles or the other hardware. It's usually the leather. Now, leather is not too bad to replace. Uh, this is just a three-quarter inch, or pretty much a three-quarter inch uh, piece of leather. Um, I've used one inch piece of leather, which works well in the CZ452, um, but would not work on the Berno Model 1, as I mentioned, which has a, a thinner or a narrower sling swivel. Um, but like I said, cotton canvas, a nice heavy stitching, um, works really well in that application. Um, one thing to note is the way the leather tab is attached on the bottom here, because I may need to, because on this one I would have to switch it around for my modification. Uh, it's just a simple matter of undoing the rivet. There we go. And then switch it around the other way. And reattach the rivet. And this is only on the uh, the butt end one. The one that goes on the fore end does not need to be switched. You can if you want, just to keep things uh, keep things the same. But it should be facing up the same way as the top of the the H buckle. The other version is a commercially manufactured one, uh, made by NC Star via Vism, uh, V I S M. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, um, but it's made out of nylon, which is has its own benefits and, and attractions. Uh, one of them is obviously it's it's more weather resistant, doesn't uh, shrink or rot. Um, one of the downsides is the leather tab is much thinner, and instead of a rivet, uh, there's a small binding post, and this is pretty unimpressive. I've replaced the binding post on uh, other slings I've modified, but the other hardware is pretty darn good. The stitching is nice, um, and the leather itself, even though it's thinner and feels flimsier, still managed to go through an entire apple seed shoot uh, without any problems. And the, obviously, since it's new, you're not running into as many problems as you do with uh, leather that's been sitting around for decades. This is a surplus sling. This is actually the first one I ever did. Um, it's the one I had on my CZ 452, 452 special that I got my. Uh, uh, highest Appleseed AQT score 230 with. Um, so you can see I've treated the leather, it's still kind of cracked, but it's been oiled so it's nice and supple. Down here, same thing like I said before, it's facing up. The tab is facing up the same way as the H buckle. And you can see the modification that I did uh, right down here. It's just a simple blind rivet with a backing plate, and it's going to be on the loop side. So it's not going to be on the single strand, it's going to be on the loop. That's going to be important later on when we actually start measuring this and laying it out. Um, to actually start laying it out, getting ready for the modification, now that the geese have passed overhead, um, you don't need to start with a measuring tape. I typically do though, um, just because for different rifles, different lengths may be required. That's one of the other problems with this as opposed to the GI sling, is that um, there's not much adjustability once you've got the rivet in place. So what I'll start with just as a baseline, is I'm going to, to, let me fold this up to show what I'm talking about a little bit better. This is the four end tab. There we go. I'm going to, be, I'm going to measure 30 inches from the end of this tab that has been folded over um, to the sling, to the body of the sling. Now 30 inches I know is just sort of a, like I said, a baseline for me. Um, 
Mine on the CZ452 happens to be 31 inches, which uh, if you're interested to know is the distance from my palm to the center of my breastbone. But I'm going to measure 30 inches. And then the 30 inch mark, I'm gonna stick a safety pin. Now it doesn't have to be precise. This is just going to be a placeholder. Um, I'm going to fit this just like I would a normal loop sling. Feed it up through the H buckle and that'll become the cuff that goes over my bicep, this, this loop right here. Um, the safety pin does not, is pretty flimsy though, so you can't put too much stress on it, which is fine because when you're actually fitting it, you don't want it to be too taut. Uh, you just want it to be tight enough. Um, but yeah, I'm going to sling up, I'm going to attach it to the rifle. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to use my Berno Model 1. Here we go. So the H buckle is going to be facing up. The, the portion that the loop pulls out of is going to be on top. I'm going to attach the single strand tab up to the forend. There we go. Go. Then down at the bottom, I'm going to attach this tab to the buttstock swivel. Now you can also sort of see why I have the tab on the outside here. Um, just a matter of pulling it and then it's free. Um, it's almost as quick as the, uh, the spring steel clip on the, GI, the USGI sling. Um, takes a little bit more to reattach it, but uh, if you're going from position to position, um, it's a really quick, quick change to make. All right. Roscoe's decided to take over my shooting mat, so I'll be showing you how to sling up here in the grass, evidently, because that's what humans do. Um, like I said, quick action to get this off the butt buttstock, and then just like your normal... Oops. A bit tangled here. There we are. Just like your normal GI sling, you pull the loop up through the middle of the H buckle. Turn it toward your shooting hand, over your bicep. and then cinch it down. Like I mentioned earlier, the uh, safety pin is just there for a reference point at this point to keep the sling from going through. It can't take much tension. So don't cinch it up too tightly. It shouldn't be a tourniquet anyway. It should just be nice and taut around there. Loop your hand around like so. I, I'm, I'm sorry, am I in your way? You get underneath your rifle. This is actually on this rifle. On this rifle, 30 inches is just about right. Now, keeping in mind, I'm not wearing much clothing over this. This is just a polo shirt, some very thin uh, um, that dry wick mesh type stuff over a t-shirt. Um, if I were shooting in the winter, I may need more, uh, more distance, more than 30 inches from the, from the sling swivel. That being said, however, uh, this may be just the right spot for this one uh, in, in typical summertime garb. But now we'll get toward the modifications. Um, nylon is a bit easier to modify than the, uh, the cotton canvas, simply because you don't have to, if, if you're using a soldering iron like I do, uh, you're not going to need to seal up the threads. If you're just cutting a hole in the, uh, in the material, you're going to need to seal up the threads one way or another. Nylon's very easy, you just need to use heat. Cotton, you probably need to use something like super glue. But we'll get to that in just a sec. I'm going to take this up and get this off the rifle. Um, then we'll modify it up on the deck. Comfy. All right, ready to modify. Now you can see I've got the, uh, the safety pin at my 30 inch mark. And like I said, 30 inches is just a ballpark estimate. Um, figure out what works best for you. You may need to move it up, down. Um, as long as it's between the H buckle and the butt end D ring, you're in the right spot. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my soldering iron. And I don't need to cut anything. I just need to press it in, let it do the work. And there we go. 
Now if I were doing this on cotton canvas, I'd probably use something like this. It's a hollow punch, uh, the same size as whatever my stopper is going to be. I'm going to use a blind rivet, in this case a 3 16 one, 3 16 inch one, um, and a couple backing plates. I typically like to do one backing plate under the rivet head. Here we go. And then one backing plate on the underside. Um, not really necessary to do the one under the head itself. Uh, just looks better, I think, at the uh, as an end result. My rivet gun. Put together. And there we go. Now I didn't need to use a blind rivet and some rivet plates either. Um, I could have used a binding post. This is a binding post I just got from the local hardware store uh, in case I wanted to remove it. In fact, I've done one modification where there are several holes and then a longer binding post that makes it easier to use, such as this one, that allows for uh, stability just an inch at a time. Turns out I didn't actually need that. I just left it in one position. That was one of the slings I brought to Appleseed. And just in the same position um, on the sling, I was able to use it in every position uh, that we shot that day. Um, but that's the long and short of how to modify it. Like I said, if, uh, if I did have to use a cotton canvas one, I'd be using a hollow punch or something else to make a hole, um, and then sealing up the threads with some, uh, just some super glue or some other sort of mild adhesive. It doesn't add any strength, but it is gonna add the ability to, uh, to sort of fuse all the fibers together so it doesn't unravel. The other important thing about uh, whatever stopper you use is that it should be able to fit through the D-ring in case you need that extra adjustment when you're going into a hasty sling. But otherwise, it's gonna stop at the H-buckle and allow me to use it as a shooting sling. So that's the full extent of the project. Um, as you can see, like I said, it's, it's quick to get into uh, and easy to use once, uh, once you've got it set up. It can be used as a hasty sling even in this position. I've heard people say you can use the hasty sling in all the positions of Appleseed and all the, uh, and the, all the positions they teach you as well. But really, it's a nice little project. Um, the slings themselves run about five to $10 for the uh, newly manufactured commercial ones. Um, the surplus slings are running a little bit more. They're usually 10 to 15 from what I can tell. Um, so they're always going to be cheaper than the GI sling. Um, if you don't have to replace the sling swivels, that's another cost saving. And we're talking about dollars here, not, uh, not tens of dollars in most cases. Um, but still, it's something that looks good on the rifle, something that's unique. And like I said, I, when I shot uh, Appleseed both times, I used this, uh, a very similar setup to this one um, and the other one with the, uh, the adjustments built in. Um, nobody else had anything like it, and it still worked just fine. Like I said, I was able to shoot rifleman scores both times, um, using bolt actions with iron sights both times, so I don't think um, it can be credited to the sling why I could never beat two or get above 230 on my AQTs. Um, some people have said that this is flimsy leather, and it does look very flimsy compared to the leather of the, uh, the surplus sling. However, I don't think it's a major detraction. I went through the entire weekend without having any damage to it, um, and unlike the surplus sling, this is always going to be new. Um, so as long as you maintain it, it should be okay. And it's pretty easy to replace even if it goes down. I imagine I could do it with a uh, the piece of paracord wrapped a few times around it. It would do uh, just the same thing. Um, if you have any questions, of course, please leave them. I'd be happy to answer them here. Um, you can also find me on Roomfire Central on the uh, Appleseed forums um, or pretty much anywhere Dr. Thunder 88 pops up. Um, happy to answer any questions and help you out the best I can. Thanks for watching. Roscoe, that's my mat. That's my mat. It's a shooting mat. It's not a dog mat. Yeah, don't let me interrupt you here, Roscoe. Just, yeah, keep doing your thing. Whatever. <laughs>